Hey everybody, we are out here with the amazing Chang Lee. We've unboxed it, we've taken it for its first drives, we've messed around with it a little bit, and the one thing that I think both David and I agree on is it seems to be far more advanced than you could have possibly imagined. It, our bar was incredibly low. It was. Honestly, a porta potty with an electric motor and a chain and some wheels, <laughs> I would have thought, not bad. Yeah. But this is so much far beyond it, so we want to take you through piece by piece, show you why this thing is so amazing, especially for the money, which is $930, $1,200 with the batteries. It's There's so much fascinating stuff. So stick around. We're going to show you deep dives into every part we can. <laughs> We're going to start by looking at the front suspension of this thing, which is it's way more impressive than you probably think. So you have this little hood here. <laughs> um, should have been a trunk, but they didn't really. There's no, floor. there's no floor. Yeah. But if you look inside, you get a pretty good view of the front, basic front suspension setup, and steering. So here's the steering shaft for the steering wheel. You got your little U joints. This is just like a normal car steering shaft, and then it goes to a rack and pinion steering setup here. You can see your little bellows for your inner tie rods, and then you've got your solid axle. So your front suspension is just a dead axle. This big old tube right here. And then this tube right here is a track bar. This is what you'd normally find on a solid axle uh, suspension setup. Um, but it gets more interesting when you look outboard. You can't see it here, so let's. But move before to the we side. move outboard, David, I just want to point out a steering, a rack and pinion steering setup on something like this is kind of amazing. The fact that it's got it's kingpin, right? Kingpins. Yep. And we'll look at that. Kingpins and. A rack and pinion setup. I cannot think of it because kingpin is kind of archaic. Old school, yeah. Rack and pinion is actually pretty modern. Cars didn't start to have that regularly until the 80s. So the combination of kingpin and rack and pinion, I'm not sure another car in the world would have that particular combo. Yeah, I agree. All right, so show us more. Okay, first off, four lugs. A smart only has three. Yeah. Citroen famously only used three. Also, this is not a steel wheel with a hubcap. This is an aluminum wheel. <laughs> yeah. Which is like, this is that a 900 and some dollar. Yeah, why isn't this a pressed I, steel chip? It does not make sense. I don't know. Anyway, with that off, you can see, you know, your tie rod ends, you know, your, your tie rod ends from your your steering rack. You've got your, uh, your, your bearing here, your wheel bearing. This is your spindle here. So this is, a, uh, a radius arm. You might find this on like a Land Rover Defender, for example, or an old Land Cruiser. Like this is used on normal cars. And this is where things get really impressive. A coilover shock and damper. <laughs> coilover? Jason. <laughs> I just can't believe they do coilovers on this. <laughs> Yes. Holy crap! It is impressive. It Holy is, crap! It is worth the spit take. I will. I, I'm okay with it, even though I'm drenched now. <laughs> Look at this. A coilover on a freaking Chang Lee. This is pretty advanced compared to a cheaper golf cart, which tends to cost five or six times what the Chang Lee costs. These golf carts might have independent front suspension over the Chang Lee solid axle, but they almost always use basic leaf springs, not coilovers. So this thing does not have any ball joints. Um, you'll see there's really nothing here. This is a kingpin setup. There are no front brakes. Anyway, that's the front suspension. It's awesome. Now let's go to the rear. Uh, we're gonna take off this last single piece lug nut, which is impressive because a lot of car makers sheep out on a two, two piece. Okay, so the rear suspension is similar to the front. It's a three link suspension setup like on a Suzuki Jimny. Here's that radius arm right here. It mounts to the solid axle in two places to prevent it from wrapping under torque, which really I don't see would be a huge issue on this particular <laughs> vehicle, but it's a little bit different than the front. On this thing, you've got a separate coil spring and damper here. In the rear, a typical golf cart, which again, costs quite a bit more than the Chang Li, just uses leaf springs. There are no control arms and there are no coil springs to be found. And also, we have a brake. This is a cable driven, so when you, oh, press, yeah, it when you press that brake pedal, you're pulling a cable, so it literally is just like pulling the handbrake. Yeah. All right, press the brake pedal there, Jason. Okay, you can see the, there's the brake pedal that he's pressing. He's pressing it straight down. Oh, there it is. It's a good look. All right, now, got a little bell crank there, and that pulls this rod. And that pulls this big, huge rod that goes across the whole vehicle. And then that pulls that rod, which then pulls that rod, which activates the rod that goes into the drum brake. It's pretty great. One nice thing also about the Chang Lee is they give you some good access to the motor. It's a lot like an old uh, Type 3 Volkswagen, like a square back where under the cargo area in the floor, you can get access to the motor. So 
You've got a nice pad here. It has a footprint on it from the factory. Then you've got a flap here that lifts up and you've got access to absolutely everything. The whole drivetrain right there. A great look at our rear suspension, coil sprung, solid axle. You can see the dampers and all that. Uh, the surprising thing here is, uh, you know, I guess I was expecting like a small motor and just a chain and like a yeah, that's what I think exposed axle or something. This is a little motor, 1.1 horsepower, bolted to the back of a, an actual functional differential. This is just a box of like mystery. All the wires from the charging port and the batteries all just wind up in here. And there's a bus bar underneath here, this yellow thing where everything sort of plugs in together. This here is your DC DC converter. Basically it takes your 60 volts from your batteries and drops it down to 12 volts for all the accessories. And then this is your controller um, to basically, you know. It's the potentiometer kind of thing on the throttle. On the pedal, to yeah. turns it into a, a torque at your motor. Yeah. And yeah, this is the motor, DC motor, 60 volts. This is a little chain drive here, I suspect. Um, from the output shaft to this differential, it's a really nice package here. Um, yeah, we should look at those batteries, shouldn't we? Yeah, okay, let's check them out. Of course, with any EV, a big issue is to where do you put the batteries. Most modern EVs have like a skateboard with the batteries flat, where they kind of have their weight low and in the center. And really, the Chang Li is subscribing to the same fundamental idea. So, the batteries in the Chang Li are actually right under the driver's seat in this little tray thing here. And this is exactly how it came from the factory. This plug is what connects the batteries to the overall system, so I'm going to take that out right now. And then this cardboard cover is what came from the factory, which appears to be just part of the box that the batteries themselves came in. And then they're just held on with two nuts. Oops, I dropped that down there. We did that once before. And a little strap. All right, there's that. Here's Now, it's not like they cheaped out and just put one bit of cardboard. There's actually three layers of cardboard protection going on here. And here's what we've got are five 12-volt batteries for a total of 60 volts. And even though the terminals are in a different location, these appear to be basically automotive lead-acid batteries, yeah. car batteries. And the um, they're wired in series. So basically that's adding voltage together. And that's how you go 12 from, you know, by five, 60. And that's pretty much all they are. Now, hypothetically, you could change this to more advanced lithium ion batteries. Like if somebody right now wrecks a Tesla Model 3 behind us and a bit of that battery tray goes flopping out here and we could get it, we could maybe pack it up and cram it in here, maybe. So I think seeing the pictures of the Chang Li before I ordered it, I made a lot of assumptions. And I think the biggest assumption I made was that this was going to be made entirely of plastic. When the Chang Li came, I realized it is all 100% metal. Metal all around, every bit. Even it, the parts that look like they should be plastic. Like the white fender here. You would think this would be a little plastic flare, but no. It's all metal. And even crazier, the whole body, aside from the doors and I think the roof panel, is one gigantic pressing somehow. There's very few weld lines anywhere. It's one big, I guess they just press it like a giant bucket or something. And it's it's astoundingly sturdy. It doesn't feel flimsy or crappy. The welds aren't beautiful that you see in here, but nothing appears like super janky, really. If you're building a car to be as cheap as possible, why would you have a windshield that has such a dramatic curve in it? Yeah, this could have been straight. Like this pillar could have been a straight pillar and a flat piece of glass. For the speeds this is going where aero just doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. They could have saved so much and yet somehow they didn't. Same with the rear glass. The rear glass is even almost straight, but it still has a little curve in it. Like. Why? And they got these nice little frit bands. Like, this is nice. It's nice. There's a, this sliding window area actually works pretty well. I mean, I've been in so much crappier cars than this in so many ways. I don't, I don't understand how they're doing it. Yeah, me neither. And the, the thing about the body is like, it's, there's not like a separate frame and any sort of body mounts. It is a unibody, but it's like a pretty basic unibody. It's just square tubing yeah. with like, the body panels are just sort of tack welded to it. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take this camera. I'm going to go underneath. I'm going to okay. slide underneath and we'll show what the body looks like, the floors and all that. I mean, look at this. It's all painted, by the way. This, all this underbody, it did, they didn't have to paint this. This could have been raw steel. And uh, you got a little bit of diamond plating right there. But basically, yeah, it's just square tubing all around. It's nice. It's unibody. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the design and materials uh, overall use in the car and especially in the interior. 
Now, the amazing thing I find about the Chang Li is that it feels, in that question of like, how car is it? It feels pretty car-like when you're actually in it. It doesn't feel like you're in a very exposed uh, like golf cart or something like that. Now, everything's crappier than you're used to, 100%, no question, but it's not that crappy. Yes, the dash flexes and moves an awful lot, but it basically stays where it's supposed to be while you're driving. The steering wheel is actually rubbery and feels pretty good. This steering wheel, David noticed, appears to be a direct copy of like a Ford Escape steering wheel. And basically, it's like they took the Jason's talking about the Ford Escape steering wheel. It looks like a Ford Escape steering wheel. Same shape, same shape. But I'm gonna show you the hardware. Forget about the wheel, who cares about the wheel? All right, crank it. Look at that U-joint, it's beautiful. Look at that U-joint, it's also beautiful. Look at the steering rack, oh gosh. Oh yes. Look at those steering tie rods, activating the steering knuckles, spinning, rotating the wheels about those kingpins. The Changli, the most advanced vehicle in its class of sub $1,000 electric vehicles from Alibaba. All the switch gear here, again, less quality than you used to, but not terrible. The uh, gear shift, okay, it pops out a little when you go in reverse, and it's pretty janky. You're not gonna put a lot of, you could snap it off if you got mad, but other than that, it's fine. And you have like the your general switches all have a little bit of motion. You can see where other switch punch outs would be. I have no idea what this little recess is for. I can't figure it out at all. The fact that there's a rear view camera at all in the cheapest possible vehicle is amazing to me. This dash unit is clearly like a standard one that they must use on a lot of things because it has markings on it for a fuel gauge and an electricity meter. You can see your you know turn indicators and kilometers per hour, although the speedo doesn't ever seem to work. It always seems to end up around 40 something. Uh, but you got your battery indicator. In addition to an odometer, it also seems to show the voltage occasionally. It just kind of flips, but look, there we go. 66.9 volts, just flips back and forth. Not a bad solution for an extra gauge without having to make a bigger cluster. The fact that there's anything here other than a bare piece of metal, frankly, for the money, is amazing to me. We didn't discover this until after we finished shooting this, but I felt it was my responsibility to let you know that the Chang Li comes standard with an electric heater. And then let's look at the actual, the floor for example. You could have had a bare floor and I would have thought, fine, I've got exactly what I've paid for and it makes sense. But not only is this a rubber mat, it's actually padded. There's a little bit of sound insulation under there. It feels soft to the touch. That's incredible. These door cards, again, this is like, you know, the same kind of plastic they use on like maybe a, like a outdoor shed, but it's fine. It's not bad. It's not bare metal. There's rather, re there's like rubber stripping around everywhere here. There's a kind of a soft feel headliner. Again, all of it is more than I expect. The seat, the quality of course, isn't amazing, but it's also not bad. It's two-tone with fake leather stuff with contrast stitching. And yet somehow they bolted the seat together before they removed the plastic. And then also on the back, so the seat flips forward and it reclines backwards. The rear seat is the same same deal, but again, you have a weird mix of higher quality stuff than you'd expect, and then total crafts, right? The seat itself, when you flip it over, has some pretty ugly stapling going on on this back side here. It looks like almost like a desktop stapler somebody went through and stapled on. Not great, but honestly, you don't really see that. Keeping to my packaging fetish, the entire length of the car is useful for people or their stuff. The trunk should have been finished with the floor so you could use it because it's not. The cargo area in the back is pretty minimal, but if you fold the seat down and it's just one or two people, extremely usable. Overall, I mean, it looks a little ridiculous and tall, but when you're inside it, you don't feel cramped. It's a weird looking design from the outside, but from the inside, it makes a hell of a lot of sense. It feels like a car, kind of. It feels like a car. The amazing thing about this Chang Li cheapest car you can buy on Alibaba, maybe in the world, is that this dirt cheap, absolute bottom of the market car could be decontented to be even cheaper. Easily. It's amazing. They, these are projector headlights. That's gotta cost money. They could have just stuck in the crappiest little sealed beam pieces of crap yeah. and it would have been fine. This fake grill isn't free. I understand they wanted to give it a tough looking face, but they didn't even have to cast this thing and put it in. It's multiple casting. The fact that there's a, a roof rack with a LED Moldings. light bar on it, there's plenty of crap build quality in this thing. Yeah. Clearly crap build quality, clearly subpar materials, but overall, 
the amount it exceeded what I expected a $1,200 mail order yeah. EV would be is phenomenal. That's what makes it special, I think. So there we go. Our tech breakdown of the Changli Nemeca, I think that's what they call it, whatever, <laughs> is 100%. We are impressed, Changli. Good job, Changli. Above and beyond. Fantastic work. Folks, this is what 1.1 horsepower gets you. Oh my gosh, that was great. Not quite 180, but pretty darn good. I feel like it might tip. <laughs>